Welcome into a fresh new edition of CBS Sports HQ presented by Canva. Love your work. I'm Jordan Georgia and we begin today with the big NFC East showdown tonight on Thursday Night Football. It's a game that has some massive postseason implications. Both teams leaning on their quarterbacks to get it done. So which dual threat QB between Jalen Hurts and Jaden Daniels will lead their team to a primetime win on the season and also make a statement in their MVP race. Both on the outside looking in as we show you a look at the shortest odds to win the NFL MVP this season. Let's go ahead and discuss more of what is in store tonight as we welcome to the show NFL analysts Lee J. Jusable and Bright McFadden. Gentlemen, it's great to see you. Guys, let's begin with just how big of a game this actually is. If you look at the last five wins for the Eagles, not great opponents. You got the Cowboys, Jags, Bengals, Giants, and Browns. Meanwhile, the Commanders, their wins this season haven't been quality big wins. There's the Arizona one that turned out to be a good one. We'll throw that one in there. But taking into consideration all of this, is this really a game that both teams need a statement win, Lige? I'll come to you first on this. Yeah, without a doubt. One, because, Jordan, whoever wins this game will be on top of the NFC East. But two, because of what you just said, when you look at the schedule, and BMAC, we know this, as players, you can't dictate who's on the schedule. You play who's on the schedule, and you beat who you're supposed to beat. But this will be a, a game that will go a long way in regards to whoever wins it when it comes to confidence of playing some of those upper echelon teams. Because if you look at the, the Eagles earlier this season, they lost to the Falcons, right? They, they lost to the Atlanta Falcons at home in primetime. And you look at the Commanders as well, right? Last week they had an opportunity to make a big statement against BMAC Steelers. Controversial call at the end, but they still didn't get it done. So this is a big game for both teams, not only because Whoever wins this game becomes first in the NFC East, but it'll go a long way in that confidence, knowing that you can beat the top teams in the league, right? Because right now, both of these teams, when it comes to playing winning teams, have struggled to come away with key wins. This uh, game tonight will go a long way in that confidence if whoever pulls out this victory. Yeah, Leger, I agree with you. You know, when you talk about the division, the NFC East, it's a two-team race right now in their division. And trying to find get that number one spot is super important because if you can finish out number one in your division, that guarantees you a home playoff game, which is which is big, which is big. And outside of that, you know, you want to keep pace with the lead dog currently in the NFC, which is the Detroit Lions. They only have one loss. So you want to try to keep pace with them because let's say there there's a few hiccups for the Detroit Lions and, and they lose a few. If you're the commanders or if you're the Philadelphia Eagles, if you take care of your business tonight and try to continue to use that momentum the rest of the way, you can find yourself sitting in the top of the, of the conference in the NFC, which will provide you a first round bye. Remember, under these new rules with the new additions uh, in, into the playoffs, only one team will get the first round bye, which is the top team in your said conference. So this has a lot at stake when you talk about division uh, ramifications and not to mention what can happen in the entire NFC. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a great point to bring up, BMAC. You know, it's almost a statement no matter what, win or lose, Lige. So what kind of statement would it send for the loser of this game? Yeah, that they still cannot beat the upper echelon of the NFL teams. When you look at what these schedules have both portrayed, right? We talked about it earlier. The Eagles, right? They lost to the Atlanta Falcons, right? They lost to the Tampa Bay Bucks at the time was a winning team, right? They've had some injuries and they've kind of struggled the last couple of weeks. And then same thing with the commanders. They lost week one to the Tampa Bay Bucks. They had an opportunity last week, uh, again, controversial call, but they end up losing to the Pittsburgh Steelers. So whoever loses this game, right? For me, more so, this hurts the commanders more because they'd be two games back mm. from the Philadelphia Eagles when it comes to the, uh, the NFC East, right? It'd still be a big loss for the Eagles, but they still have a chance to play the commanders again. So to me, this right now is a bigger game for the commanders because right now they're a game back from the Philadelphia Eagles. But either way, people will look at both of these teams saying, are they truly legit whoever loses this game because they can't seem to beat the top tier talent in the NFL? And I'll say this too, when you talk about the Philadelphia Eagles, they're seven and two, a uh, game of uh, a top, uh, uh, of the commanders but to your point for the commanders it's paramount for them to get back in the winning track because I can tell you this much when you look at the NFC uh, the quantity of really good teams is something that surprised has surprised mm. all of us so if you're the commanders you're six and three 
right? You just lost a heartbreaking loss to the Pittsburgh Steelers. You cannot allow the Pittsburgh Steelers to beat you twice. Meaning, losing that ball game in an emotional factor or a short week and not really getting off uh, to a fast start, thinking about what just happened the week before, the, the previous week, and then you lose again tonight, then you're six and four. If you're six and four, now you have to really be mindful of what could happen the rest of the way. And what I mean when I say that, guys, look at what's going on in the most competitive division in the NFL, which is the NFC North. You have the Detroit Lions, you have the Minnesota Vikings, and you have the Green Bay Packers. Three legit playoff caliber teams. And if you're the Washington Commanders, if you lose tonight, you don't want to be in that traffic jam of competitive teams, mostly coming from the NFC North, because all three of those teams are playing high-level football, and most importantly for the Minnesota Vikings and the Green Bay Packers, they know what's at stake. So if you're the Commanders, you put yourself in a very, very vulnerable position if you lose tonight, because being 6-4 and four is not the best spot you want to be when you look at how well they started the season in the first two months of the year. Yeah, I think we can go yeah, three just for three add, here. Go ahead, Lige. Yeah, yeah, Joe, I just want to add something that B, uh, alluding to what BMAC was saying. Not only the NFC North, BMAC, but the NFC West. Let's not forget the boogeyman. The San Francisco 49ers are right there, and they're getting healthy at the right time. I believe the most surprising team so far in the NFC is the Arizona Cardinals, who are on top of that division. The Rams did take a tough loss the other night on Monday night, but they're still there as well. So that's why I think this is more important for the commanders, because what you talked about, BMAC, if they lose this game and go to four losses, then they're logjam with a lot of other teams in the NFC, and this could come down to the wire. Yeah, we can go three for three here. Definitely a bigger game for the Washington commanders, but both both teams needing a statement win tonight. And good news is that both of these teams are getting back some key players. We have the Eagles getting back offensive tackle, Jordan Mailata, and Commanders getting a big piece of their run game back in Brian Robinson. Lige, seems like both of these teams getting back to full strength at the right time. Yeah, for sure, without a doubt. And of course, Jordan Malata, when you're the left tackle, you're the blind side of the quarterback. So they've missed him severely, not only for what he does in the pass blocking game, but also in the run blocking. But Brian Robinson, B-Rob, what he's meant to this commander's offense from a gritty, feisty, angry runner type mindset, I think it's been really missed by this commander's team the last few weeks. Now, I think Austin Eckler did a hell of a job last week in the red zone being physical with a couple runs. But BMAC, you know this, a guy like Robert Robinson wears on you, right? Three yards here, four yards here. And then you see it right there on the screen, right? You think you have him bottled up? He keeps turning those legs. Next thing you know, it's a 35-yard run. And I think that they have missed that the last few weeks. I think... Jaden Daniels has missed that in regards to him using his mobility as well because when Brian Robinson is eating off those four or five yard runs, right, that backside in, he wants to crash to get down to slow him down. So they haven't really had that the last few weeks. And you've seen Jaden Daniels not be able to use his legs as much the last few weeks. So I think that's a major boost for the commanders just because of the physical mindset that Brian Robinson adds to this offense. Yeah, for their offense, he's like the Ford F-150. He's the big truck. He's the guy that comes and runs over curbs and things like that with no regards. And not to mention that style of play, it helps their defense because those two backs, Austin Eckler, Brian Robinson, they're two different styles of backs. You know, you look at what Detroit is having going on with their running game with Sonic and Knuckles. Everyone is looking for those two different styles of backs that can wear down on opposing defenses. They didn't have that when Brian Robinson was out of the lineup. But now having him back in the lineup, he can wear down on defenses. And then Austin Eckler can, can provide a spark when you look at being a smaller guy, a little more shiftier. And it really helps their offense because not having that tone setter for their offense, for the commanders, you really saw a difference in production. So having that F-150 back in the lineup, should be huge for their success. All right, but are we going to see a, like a fully loaded F-150, you guys think, VMAC? Like, or it's going to take a, a hot second? No, 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 no. It's not going to be fully loaded. Now is the time. Me and Lizzie <laughs> just talked about how important this ball game. So for B-Rob, now is the time. It's fully loaded. You got a full tank of gas, and you need to pave the way for success. <laughs> All right, you guys, let's go ahead and get our X Factor for tonight's game, Thursday Night Football, presented by Canva. Love your work. BMAC, I'm coming to you first on this one. Take your pick. You got some options. Who's your X Factor tonight? I got a lot of options, but my X Factor is for the Philadelphia Eagles, and that's A.J. Brown. And the reason why A.J. Brown is my X Factor for tonight's ball game is because Saquon Barkley is going to get a lot of attention. You know why? The commanders, their defense, they've been bad against rushing attacks. 28th in the National Football League, 
They've been allowing 142 yards in the game. So guess what? They got to find a way to slow down the running game. There lies the opportunity for A.J. Brown. He's healthy, he's ready to go, and you look at what A.J. Brown did against the Commanders last season. In two ball games, 305 yards receiving, four total touchdowns. I understand this is a new coaching regime there for the Commanders, but Leger, a lot of those players that could not control or contain A.J. Brown in the secondary last year, they're still in place this year for oh, the yeah. Commanders. <laughs> so when you factor in the success that A.J. Brown just think, if they can't stop Saquon and they focus in more attention to try to slow down Saquon, and you leave that grown man outside, number wearing number 11 with those uh, high yellow cliques that he loves to wear, one-on-one -on -one opportunities, the same things that we saw a year ago could surface once again. And then if that's the case, good luck, commanders. The Eagles will be flying high. Yeah, b -Mick, I love that pick. You saw the graphic. They're 6-0 with A.J. Brown in the lineup, averaging nearly 30 points a game or right around 30. Without him, only 17 points per game, and they're 1-2. My X Factor is for the commander, and it, commanders, and it's Frankie Louvu. And I say he's the X Factor because when you go back to last week and you saw where the Eagles struggled on offense, it was a guy that had a similar skill set in Demarion Overshone. He did a really good job last week being able to be multiple. You're going to see him right here, right? You're going to see him off the edge. Watch how he sets his physical edge and gets a tackle for minimal gain. Well, Frankie Louvu can do that too. Dan Quinn likes to move him all around. Then they also have struggled with this double A gap mug. You see him right here to, in the middle of your screen to the left. Watch him shoot, beat the running back, and go collect the sack. Well, D Mac and Jordan, Frankie Louvu does the same thing. Look at that. Right up the A gap, tackle for loss. That's what he does. He plays with reckless abandon. Bootleg? Yeah, no. When he splits it up the A-gap, he's so athletic and fast. And right here, you're going to see him on the edge. He gets to the quarterback from the edge, just like we saw DeMario Overshone. So, to me, Frankie Louvu will be big for the commanders. Just his versatility alone, B-Mac, the way they use him in multiple ways, that the Eagles offense really struggled with DeMario Overshone last week. Frankie Louvu presents that same type of issue this week. You guys, you know, I usually can tell which way you guys are leaning when we do our game previews typically. And I was like, I, I can't really put my finger on it. Where you guys are going until BMAC threw out the good luck commanders, fly, Eagles, fly. So BMAC, are you riding with the home team here who's favored at three and a half? I, I am. I'm riding with Philadelphia. They've been phenomenal during this five-game winning streak, and I'm really loving what I'm seeing from the defense. You can tell they're fully acclimated to this new scheme that Vic Vangio has implemented for them, and the high vested players that they drafted are now living up to the building. And then when you transition to the commanders, I have my concerns with their offense, most importantly with Jaden Daniels. Not about his production, guys, but I think health-wise. I think he's still dealing with the the, the rib case of the rib injury, and you're not really seeing the Jaden Daniels that we saw in the first month and a half of the season, especially when it comes to the running game. Get this against the Pittsburgh Steelers. He only ran the ball three times. He didn't try to get involved, so maybe he's trying to preserve himself when it comes to hits because he's not fully comfortable with the pain that he has to endure with these rib, the, the, the rib injury. So I factor all of that into the equation because when you look at the last four or five ball games, Philadelphia has been more, they've been hotter. They've been more dominant in, in their wins compared to what we haven't seen for the commander. So give me Philadelphia. And not, not to mention, playing at home is a big time plus as well, especially during this short week. Yeah, that's not a, not a bad pick, B-Mac. When you look at this Eagles defense the last five games, one of the best, if not the best in football, only giving up 11.6 points per game. But I'm riding with Jordan's team, the Commanders, <laughs> plus three and a half, right? You talked about Jaden Daniels potentially not being healthy enough to run. We talked about that earlier. I believe Brian Robinson not being in the offense has really hurt him when it comes to his mobility. They need that gritty runner that can get the ugly yards that forces that backside in to really crash and not pay attention to Jaden Daniels. That way he can get on the edge. And then when you look at it, right, you talked about the Philadelphia Eagles being at home. Let's not forget earlier this year they played on Monday Night Football Sur surrendered a loss to Kirk Coach Chains and the Atlanta Falcons. As a matter of fact, their last seven home games, BMAC, you know, we like to follow the trends. They're one and six against the spread, their last seven home games. So when you look at that, everything points to me going to the commanders. I got one more caveat for you, BMAC. When you look at Jaden Daniels, the golden child, right? After a loss, going back to LSU days at this 2022, eight and one straight up and eight and one against the spread. The kid shows up after a loss. Give me the commanders plus three and a half. 
And and I'm gonna use my guy B Max term real quick. <laughs> Sprinkle a little something straight up on the money line. <laughs> oh, I love that. I love I, that. I got Lege. I got a question for you, Lege. How you gonna yeah. use my term on me? How you gonna use B Mac on B Mac? <laughs> like, what I what I love a little something on the money line. This is the first time I've heard the the Kirko chains reference. So hopefully we see a little you like that from Jaden Daniels when it's all said and done. Guys, thanks so much for joining us as we break down here on CBS Sports HQ. A huge matchup in the NFC East tonight on Thursday Night Football. It's the Eagles and the Commanders. Keep it right here on CBS Sports HQ. We're going to have all the news, highlights, and scores you could want. It's all right here, and it's all free. Got all the NFL coverage you can need.